Hello, and welcome to this presentation about the preliminary control and stability analysis of a long-range eVTOL aircraft. My name is Jakob Schulzer, and today I will be presenting to you the work I've done on this topic together with my colleague Miguel Quadrat Grzybowski and our tutor, Dr. Saulo Castro. So, to give you some context, this work was performed within the multidisciplinary design and optimization of the widget concept for a long-range eVTOL aircraft. In this presentation, I want to highlight how we made sure that this aircraft um, satisfies stability and controllability limits. I hope this procedure will be useful to other projects as well. So what do we mean by stability and controllability? Well, stability refers to the ability of the aircraft to generate restoring forces and moments when subjected to a small disturbance. Controllability, on the other hand, refers to the ability of the pilot to reach any desired state of the aircraft using the available inputs. These two are often treated together because they are affected by similar design variables and can sometimes be conflicting in design. Designing eVTOL aircraft for stability and controllability can be particularly challenging because we have three different flight phases. The vertical flight during takeoff and landing, the horizontal flight to cover large distances, as well as the transition between the two. In this presentation, we will look at the first two in quantitative terms. Let's start by looking at cruise, which take up, takes up the longest time during the mission. More specifically, we will start by looking at static longitudinal stability, which requires that CM alpha is smaller than zero. So any small change in angle of attack will be accompanied by a restoring pitching moment. The expression for CM alpha can be seen on this slide for tandem wing aircraft. And we can identify multiple different dependencies. For instance, there is a dependency on the location of the center of gravity, the lift curve slope, the relative wing sizes, and the downwash gradient. Many of these parameters can easily be found from aerodynamic analysis and the geometry, although the downwash gradient is slightly more involved. And we use this semi-empirical relationship to model it in our design process. Using these equations, we essentially get a limit on the allowable CG position. And we found that the two most important parameters to affect this were the front wing aspect ratio and the relative wing sizes. In this picture, you can see the design space in terms of these two variables plotted, where the color corresponds to the value of CM alpha. The stability criterion results in a limit on these uh, design variables which we need to obey, which is represented by the orange line. Our aircraft must be on the right-hand side of this line. The blue line re represents controllability, which I will get back to in a second. The most stable aircraft would, according to analysis, have a small front wing with a low aspect ratio. However, however this would come at the cost of higher induced drag and um, more difficulty in placing the rotors on the front wing. Therefore, we decided to keep the wings at the same size and instead move the center of gravity forward. Now let's look at static lateral stability. This uh, has a different criterion, which is called the weather vane condition. That is, if the aircraft turns slightly, it tends to turn back into the incoming airflow. This isn't as closely related to the center of gravity location, but it still plays a role because the vertical tail and rudder need to have a sufficiently large moment arm to achieve this kind of stability. And that leads me to the next topic, control surfaces and the vertical tail. We made a decision in our design to use conventional aerodynamic surfaces to control the aircraft in cruise. This is because uh, our literature study suggested this would be more energy efficient, which was crucial for our mission. For yaw control, we therefore have a rudder mounted to a vertical tail, which is sized to achieve the weather vane condition. For pitch control, we have elevators, and for roll control, we have ailerons. In fact, it was decided to merge the, la the last two into ailerons, which are placed on both wings to have sufficient sufficiently large area to satisfy the controllability condition. More details on the sizing procedure can be found in our paper. Now we have related the center of gravity location to the static stability as well as the sizing of the control surfaces. 
This can give us a basic design, which we will now further analyze. The first step in this is to look at the dynamic stability characteristics. We represented these using a set of linearized equations of motion, which depend on a series of um, stability and controllability derivatives. These essentially show how the different moments and forces on the aircraft change with the state of the aircraft as well as control inputs. Now there wasn't a lot of literature on how to derive these for tandem wing aircraft, so we derived a new set of expressions for these ourselves, which can be found in our paper. Two of the most um, important ones, apart from the CM alpha that I mentioned before, are CM beta, which we already know from the weather vane condition, as well as CL beta. Together, these strongly affect the behavior of the aircraft in the Dutch roll and spiral eigenmodes. Upon investigation of these uh, stability derivatives, we decided to put a negative dihedral on the wings of the widget in order to achieve that the Dutch roll mode would be open loop stable. And this uh, was done to increase passenger comfort and ease of control. Calculating all the stability derivatives allowed us to simulate the dynamics of the aircraft in Simulink. Here you can see um, what the response to certain control inputs looked like. So apart from the spiral, all of the modes are stable, but the response still isn't very favorable. In the lateral modes, we see a lot of oscillations, and in the longitudinal modes, there is a very slow response. Therefore, we decided to create a controller. For the longitudinal motion, this is simply a PI controller um, acting on the pitch angle, whereas for the lateral modes, a more sophisticated controller was implemented in order to facilitate a coordinated turn. After combining this with our dynamics model, we see that indeed the responses have become much more favorable with fewer oscillations, quicker response times, and minimal overshoot. This closes our discussion on cruise. Now let's move on to the second flight phase we consider, which is hover. Here, it is much more difficult to achieve open loop stability. So we focused our attention more on controllability. Here we were inspired by a paper by Du et al who use a simple linear dynamic model for hover, here represented as a state space system. I especially want to draw your attention to the vector capital F, which contains the control forces and moments we can apply. This can be represented as a matrix vector product, where the matrix contains information about the location of the rotors, and the uh, vector, small f, contains the thrust of the individual rotors. Using this model, Du et al. proposed two criteria for stability. The first criterion is well known. It is that the rank of the, the controllability matrix is um, the same as the number of variables, uh, the number of states we want to control. This was never found to be limiting in our design process. The second one is the so-called available control authority index, which needs to be larger than zero. To find out how this is calculated, please have a look at the paper itself. The important bit is that this, this uh, index depends on the location of the rotors, their sense of rotation, the mass of the aircraft, the center of gravity of the aircraft, as well as a coefficient relating the reactive torque to the thrust of each rotor. This leads me to conclusion of this overview presentation. So in this presentation, I've shown you how we can calculate the allowable CG range uh, for an aircraft in cruise, design a vertical tail and control surfaces for it, estimate the stability and control derivatives, which allows to perform a dynamic simulation and design a controller. For hover, we've been able to relate the controllability to the CG location and the rotor configuration. For future work, um, we suggest uh, verification of the stability and control derivatives using CFD, a better, finding a better downwash model for our specific case, as well as quantification of transition aerodynamics which were not treated in this work. Furthermore, a controller should be designed for the other flight phases. Thank you very much for attending this presentation. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to ask me or any of my co-authors. Uh, co -authors, authors. And uh, I thank you very much for listening in.